Today we're in the kitchen with Chef Walter Stave. He's the executive chef of City Tavern here in Philadelphia and also the award-winning host of A Taste of History. Walter, thanks for being with us. I'm so excited to be here, especially with this beautiful purple blouse. My favorite color, by the way. Now. It is your favorite color and it's a beautiful blouse. I got it from Nitwit and I yes. better put my apron on so I don't get it Did all Did you know dirty. that was my favorite color? That's why you're wearing it today? It is why I'm wearing it today. <laughs> Anything for you, Walter. So in other words, the word is out. The word is out, yeah. <laughs> anyway, today I'm showing you two things that are best sellers in the city tower in my Great. restaurant. And they come easy together. They're nice. There's one tricky part and one, and this is the duck sausage. Okay. That obviously not, not enough time to, this, to demonstrate to you, mm -hmm. but I show you how to make the sweet and sour cabbage. It's butter, mm -hmm. shallots. Well, shallots are sweeter than onion yes, for this recipe. Yes, I love shallots. At the same time, when this is cooking, I take my sausage. Now, I make those sausage myself, so it's a, it's mallow duck. Okay. That's just put in the casing, has a little bit of pork, obviously, as a binder. Okay. I take in the red cabbage, I already sliced it up. Okay. Like so. And now you're going to do two things. We're going to deglaze a little bit with red wine. And then we're going to put balsamic vinegar mm -hmm. in there. And it's the balsamic that gives you good flavor. Let it cook a little bit now. Most important is the sugar. Oh, you want okay, to balance. Sugar. You want to balance the sugar. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of ways you can also do it. You can also caramelize the sugar first, or use brown sugar. But okay. either way, it turns out good. And once you get it just set, you just move it to the side. Get a little bit low heat on here, and let it cook. In the meantime, I have the sausage on the skillet, as you see. We're going to get started on the main course. So the pork tenderloin, you clean it completely, but you know you can buy it completely in any supermarket and completely clean. What I like about pork tenderloin is that it has the, it's so tender, you don't have any waste, and it's easy to make. What you want to do is when you have the pork tenderloin, you can cut it however you like it. Mm -hmm. There is no right or wrong difference because if you could, you know, you cut the end off, just like this, and you pound it gently with your hand. Okay. Because it's so delicate, it doesn't need anything else, you know? Look at that. Sure. And then comes the trick, and this is really the most important part of the entire recipe. You want to take your ale. For me, obviously, it's easy because I have Thomas Jefferson's ale. That yard spoon can mix for me exclusively. Love yard spoon. Over the ale, you put the tenderloin, like I said over there, in a shallow dish. Put some shallots over. And let me see if it's any oh, good. Oh, so you marinate it in the beer. Mm. And you look at it, how quick this comes together. Because all you want to do, the sausage is completely cooked. All you want to do, get it nice, get a little, little Car caramel to it. Uh -huh. Get some butter mm -hmm. and a little bit of oil. And then this is a dish that I personally do not flour now. Okay. You might find some cookbooks that say when you cook pork, always flour it. I don't necessarily mm -hmm. believe it. So look at our appetizer is ready. All we got to do later is plate it up. How so simple easy. Is that? So easy. And obviously I took a shortcut today because we don't have enough time. What I did is I took some leeks and fried it already. Ooh, that goes on top of the Very sausage. Early. Please. You know, the 18th century, uh, mashed potatoes been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. But what it did is put a lot more flavor into it. I have a little butter. Again, 18th century is all about they butter. They love their butter in the 18th century. Do we three slices of bacon over there? So butter and bacon becomes, again, beautiful, too. And just want to do is slice it up any size you want it. Okay. Small, bigger, mm -hmm. like so. So then we're going to cook the bacon in the butter? You got it. I like where we're going with this. There's not much more, there's not more flavor you can get on that. <laughs> exactly. There's some onion, really coarse for that, nothing fine chopped. A really rough chop on that, like about so. You look like you've done that before. Uh, a few times. <laughs> I was just saying to some people the other day, all the old-time chefs are kind of disappearing on us, so I gotta hold the four down, you know? You're doing a good job of that. So why don't you tell me about your show, A Taste of History? Well, you know, Taste of History, actually, uh, your boss right here and I conceptualized many years ago on it, and it became a popular show because it takes history and cooking together. And I cook really 18th century style. This is what makes it unique. Just like what we're doing today. Uh, except an open fire with oh, more, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I just came back from the Bahamas. We're just finishing season five. Really? Getting into season six. I wasn't starting. So you've got a nice tan. Well, I was cooking out on the beach. <laughs> uh, going to South Africa. Wow. See, so now what I do here is just put the pork in it. The pork has a good amount of flavor because it's been marinated in the ale. Stay tuned for more Best of the Best with Chef Walter Stave. We are back with more from the Best of the Best. And all you want to do on that here, give it a nice little, nice little, Turn really quick. You don't want to have, you don't want any color on there. Mm -hmm. You just want to kind of have it like, like I call it a little blanching on it, you know what I'm saying? You see the bacon, that's nice. Now we're going to add the onion into it. So 
a taste of history. You travel all over the world then. This is not just American no, history. No, no, no. We go wherever the wow. English... You see, the English said the sun mm -hmm. will never set the English Empire. Mm -hmm. So we go wherever the English war. The reason we went to the Bahamas, the first assault by the new U.S. Navy in 1776 was in the Bahamas. Really? So we recreated it. Really? And then we cooked the food, yeah. So the potatoes are cooked nicely okay. while we were standing here. Chit-chatting, potatoes are done. So all I'm going to do with those, you know, strain them out quick. And obviously you see me cutting them small. You don't have to do it this mm -hmm. way, but I think if you cut it small, much easier later to mash them up, you know. The onion and, and uh, bacon, perfect, right into it. Oh, wow. We'll count the colors. Reach me the parsley. Okay, reach me the green right next to it. Mm -hmm. The cream? Heavy cream, yeah, heavy cream. Heavy cream in there, so heavy cream. Now remember, this is a different potato than you many times see, mm -hmm. because what I'm doing with it, I'm just mashing them up, but just I really a don't. Bit. Correct, it's kind of like, you know. Chunky. Exactly. You're gonna take the mustard green, that's your favorite, I know, break it in big pieces. Go right on top. Great. Mustard green is difficult, as you well know, because what it does, it has a very short shelf life. Mm -hmm. it, it really welts in like in no time. Yeah, that's right. Mustard green in there. There we go. Already demi in there. Okay, demi red wine, yep. So we're gonna blade up the first course. What we're gonna do there, the cabbage we cooked earlier. Mm. Just one of the cabbage on the blade. Look at that, nice and cooked down and purple. caramelized, purple. Matches your shirt. Sure does. And all I do for that is I take the uh, duck sausage and just actually for that, we're just gonna cut it in half. One here like that, one here like that. Now what I'm gonna do is put a little bit, just a tad, of demi over, just a tad, not more than that, like so. Very nice, very nice, Walter. And now the big thing on that is the fried leg on top, that gets it a nice little, Finishing also, touch. also sometimes I use fried horseradish, it works mm. the same way. Okay. And then I get a little bit of, there we go, you can present our table. That looks wonderful. Bring me the other plate. Now you see in the potatoes, you see what makes them nice? Mm -hmm. Because if you completely smash them, like regular mashed potato, yes. there's, there's no other way to call it, so I'm just calling it mashed. But sure. much nicer looking. And then we're gonna do, put this on the plate, put this on the, on the bottom of the plate, like so. Obviously the bacon, can you smell it? Oh, I sure can. <laughs> Nothing like the smell of bacon. Then we're going to do, for this plate, we're going to just take two medallions off. Let's see, there's a nice one here. There we go. Medallion here. And then we're going to just take the, the greens, and you don't want to cook them too much. You just, just want to have them, them, you just want to have them wilted, mm -hmm. like so. And then just, you cook them too much, it's a shame because they're so beautiful, you know? They have that nice mustardy flavor. Yep. Well, as you will know, since you work with herbs a lot, there comes many different mustard greens. You know, you mm -hmm. have this one, you also have the one that's more curly, yep. more blanchant, they have many they different. Have, they have a purple mustard green. Correct. <laughs> well, there are so many hybrids too, but they're all delicious. Yes. And basically, straightforward, this dish is done. All looks we gotta fantastic. do, all we gotta do is put a little parsley around the rim, and how much simple does it get? But you do me one favor before sure you, you gotta do that. Try those potatoes for me. Because mm. what's different about it is much different than most of the potatoes you get. Mm. They're hot, but they're good. Well, you work with me, I'm always hot. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we take this over to the table? Absolutely. Case? All right, let me cut you a little bit of the dark sausage Thank here. Thank you. With the sweet and sour egg cabbage. Try it, try it together with the cabbage. Cabbage looks great. The cabbage together, it's caramelized, so it gets a nice, mm -hmm. nice flavor to it. Mm. And you can tell the balsamic vinegar too. Mm. That's great. Now the, the pork, let me give you, let me serve you. I know it's a big piece, but. Mm, I can finish here. it. <laughs> give me a spoon over there. I'll give you some of the world famous uh, mm. potato. Thank you, that duck sausage and, is wonderful. And a little bit of greens on top, we gotta of give you. Oh, come on. <laughs> See, I'm not a good waiter, but I cook better. That's okay. There you go. What do you think about that? Looks wonderful. So easy, but so 18th century, so simple to make, you know? Mm. Very much. 
Mm. And I love the bacon and potatoes. Chef. Beautiful. It was wonderful to have you back on the show today. And congratulations to on your Emmys. It's so great to be with you, La <laughs> lady in purple. Love it. Chef, thank you again. After the break, Tina Marie will talk with the experts at Barsky Diamonds.